What's going on everybody? This is Brandon Hill and today we're going to do a deep dive on how to create and use an arpeggiator in the machine. And the ARP engine will allow you to create cool and mesmerizing melodic elements that you could use to unlock new ways of creativity when using the Machine MK3 or the Machine Plus. And I've used the arpeggiator in a few of my past songs that I've posted on my channel, such as these two here. So with that, I'm gonna show you everything that I know about the arpeggiator and see if I can help you create something new with your music. So let's get into it. So we're here inside of the machine and I have an instrument loaded up on this pad right here, the ambient planet from the hybrid keys. And to enter or to create an arpeggiator, we are going to enter chords mode. So hit chords mode here and you are going to hit this, it says note repeat and then underneath it says arp. So if you're in keyboard mode and you hit note repeat, it's just going to repeat one note. However, if you're in chords mode and you have note repeat activated, it's going to create an arpeggiator. So it's real easy to get into the arpeggiator mode and create something like that, but there's so much more that the ARP engine can do and that's what we're going to walk through here. So first I'll show you that even though you're pressing one note, if you record something, you can look on the screen and it's gonna record all the notes that it plays in this sequence here. So that's what that looks like. Also, another thing that you could do that's interesting that I didn't know about until recently is instead of just holding one pad, you could hold multiple pads and get a new effect out of the arpeggiator. So you could do that. And then another thing you could do is you could turn fixed velocity on and off. And then when you press down at different rates of pressure, you'll get a different sound coming out of the arpeggiator. So I'll press down lightly and then harder. So you could change the velocity and get a new sound and make things sound more realistic rather than keeping the fixed velocity on the whole time. So now let's move up to the display area. So right now when I play a note, it's going to this right here, 1 8th. And if I hit here 1 16th, the rate is going to increase into 1 16th notes. And then 1 32nd. And these are four presets that are set right here, but you could change this to whatever you like. And that's where we'll move down here. So where it says rate and rhythm, right now it's set to 1 8th. You could set this to 1 4th and you see how this updates there. Let's put that back to 1 8th. Okay. Next we'll go to the main. If you go to down, it's going to do the opposite from the top note down to the bottom. Like dun dun dun. Up and down is going to play back and forth as the name would suggest. Da, 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 da. Order played. And then if you hit chord, it's just going to repeat a chord. Okay, so let's go back to up. We've gone through the rate and then unit, so normal, it's going to play a normal unit, so 1 8th, it'll play every uh, 1 8th note. If you set it to triplet, it's going to play triplet. So notice the sound of this versus triplet. Okay, and then with dotted, it's going to play a dotted syncopated rhythm. Let's move up here. So I have this menu pinned right here, so it stays up here, but yours might not be pinned. Let me go back. So if yours isn't pinned, it's going to look like this. You'll hit it, but it won't stay there. So if you want the menu to be pinned, you would hit this, make sure that's highlighted. And now when you go in and out, it's going to stay there. We'll lock the ARP engine. So you could play something. You could go to the plugin window and you'll still be able to play see that? If this isn't on, I could be here in the ARP engine and play, but if I go somewhere else, it's not activated anymore. So that's what the lock button does. And if you press hold 
once I hit a note, the arpeggiator is going to continue to play until I take the hold off. So there's that. The gate reset button is related to this right here, the gate where you can adjust the gate of the sound. See how I adjusted the percentage? If I hit gate reset, it goes back to 100. Okay, moving on to this display now. So listen to 1 8 and this is the sequence that we have. That's the default sequence. Right here, if you turn this, you have these eight different sequences which will play different types of patterns with the arpeggiator. So notice the sound when I start to change these sequences. So you could change and create new sequences if you don't want to use the default. Now octaves, this is how many octaves the arpeggiator will go through in one cycle. So when it's set to one, it goes through one octave. If I set it to two, it's going to go up two octaves. Let's try four. So you could get some really cool effects with that and just unlock your creativity. Dynamic is going to adjust the velocity that you're playing with. So you notice if I hold this and I decrease this. So that could be something you have fun with. Okay, so we've already gone over a lot that this arpeggiator could do, but there's a whole other page here. So look at this display here. There's a page two. So let's talk about re-trigger. Right here, the way we have this, there's three notes playing. One, two, three, and then it re-triggers. If we set re-trigger to one, listen to how it sounds different. So it's just playing that one note. If it's two, Okay, now we get up to three and it's going to sound normal how we were used to it before. If we go up to four, it's going to play one, two, three, one, and then it's going to restart. So you can hear it go one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. If we go to five, it's going to go one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, and repeat that. and then so forth. So repeat will set the number of times that each note will play before it moves on to the next one in the arpeggiator. So if it's set to one, it's just going to play each note once. If it's set to two, it's going to play one, one, two, two, three, three. And then three. Okay. So with offset, it'll do just that. It'll take the sequence and it'll offset it by a number. So Here's the original. If we set offset to plus one, it's going to start on the next note up and then repeat the cycle. So notice when it's off, it starts right here, goes here, and then there. But if offset is set to one, it's going to start with this note, go here, and then there, and then repeat. And if you offset two, it's going to start here, go here, here, and repeat. Okay, with inversion, what it's going to do when you activate it, it's going to add these different alterations to the sequence. So let's select one, or let's play it like this, and then we'll try to see what this sounds like. Two. Okay. 
Lastly, we have the minimum key and the maximum key, and those basically set the bounds of what the arpeggiator can play. So the minimum key will set the lowest key that, the, that can be used as an input for the arpeggiator, and then the maximum key will set the maximum key that can be used for the arpeggiator. So C, negative two, that's such a pretty low range, and then you have G8, which is like all the way up there at the highest octave that you could play. And this is how the arpeggiator works and all the things that you could do. There's so much more that it could do than just playing a simple default setting. You could do so much more when you can make some new melodic elements that you didn't have in your arsenal before that. So I hope you learned a lot today. Thanks for watching the tutorial. If you liked it, like, comment, and subscribe. It'll really help this channel. I'm trying to grow it. And I will start working on the next tutorial for everybody out there. So I'll see you then.